The Legend of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Part 1, Chapter 10, Leonardo. The spikes pierced through the front tyres of the car and managed to make the vehicle skid to a halt just inches before fatally smashing into the man. The blind man, whose name was Bob Christian, claimed he was in infinite debt to the mutant. Through this, a special order of five pizzas was made and left outside the back door of the parlour so Splinter could take this home to be eaten by him and his sons. All his sons loved the pizza and to this day, whenever he and his sons wanted a treat, usually once a week, the parlour was more than happy to supply. On later dates, Splinter would save other citizens and those who wished to would supply him with items for him and his sons to return the favour. He never begged, but simply helped. He never expected anything, but was thankful for what he did get. This was the attitude he believed would most likely reduce a lot of conflict in the world. Stepping forwards to an equally cold February Wednesday in 2013, Splinter and Leonardo had emerged from the sewers wearing disguises to try and cover their appearances. Whilst on the surface, they both wore hoods to try and obscure their faces. A hefty price to pay. Never interact with anything and never show your face to anyone. Ghosts in a crowded city. The surface was both beautiful and unforgiving, both welcoming and isolation. Master Splinter was wearing a black martial arts suit consisting of trousers and a shirt with a hood, once again with the two sewn on badges of the golden S and the green footprint symbol. Whilst Leonardo was wearing light grey sweatpants and a sky blue hoodie, severely stretched over his shell. They both wore tatty looking trainers. They had to get at least three sizes bigger than comfortable as their mutated feet were not the standard human shape. And although Master Splinter was able to get into normal gloves, Leonardo had to wear slightly adapted for two fingers and thumb gloves. We may have to walk for a while, but I thought I would show you what New York City really looks like, Splinter said. As they walked, Leonardo was majorly impressed by the massive buildings and multicoloured lights of Times Square. He had seen it so many times in films and heard about it so often in books that it felt surreal to finally be there. They strolled past the Empire State Building and Leonardo felt humbled. The whole city had a magic and timeless quality. This is fairly awesome, I suppose. He commented a little more excitedly than he had expected, partially failing to suppress his emotions as intended. It was a lot more crowded and noisy than Leonardo had anticipated, but other than that it was a rather pleasant walk. Apart from the two times Leo tripped over his oversized shoes and the one time a dog had barked at him and he'd nearly attacked the poor old woman trying to control it. His dad had thankfully stopped him from doing so. It was only now Leonardo had relaxed, he realised how much better this place smelt than the sewers. It was scarily nice. He wanted to live on the surface already, but he knew it was too good to be true as he remembered he and his family would never be accepted into normal society. In a way, he was almost resentful at the world for this, but then the feeling passed as he realised there was not much he could do about it and that becoming aggressive was not the answer, no matter how often Raph claimed it was. They halted. Why have we stopped here? asked Leo. Then he turned around and saw they were by a harbour, and in the distance was the great copper overseer of the Big Apple herself. She shone a formal shade of underlit orange against the canvas of darkness. Why have you taken me to see this now? Leonardo asked, staring fascinated up at the iconic frozen goddess of his home city. Master Splinter gave a look of great thought with his ears retreating to the flatness of his head as he carefully chose his next few words. When you and your brothers leave together to train on the surface this Friday, I will need a leader for the group. I thought it best to show you the world you would be entering so you could appropriately prepare yourself for undertaking the task. Leonardo gawped at him and blurted out, but I don't understand. You're the leader. One day, I will not be here, Leonardo. One day, my dear child, you will have to lead your brothers. 
Leo laughed nervously and, seeing that his dad was serious, replied quickly and without having fully formed his sentences. I'm not... It, it would be a lot of... They won't listen to me. I'm not leadership material like you. Besides, Raphael and Donatello are a year older than me. Why not take one of them on as leader? Splinter softly spoke. Leadership is not about age. You are meant to be the leader because you have one quality your brothers do not. You will be a great leader. You just need to believe in yourself. I know you can do it. And deep down, I think you do too. What do I have that my brothers do not? Questioned Leonardo. I think your first task as leader should be to figure that one out for yourself. Master Splinter replied enigmatically. Once Leonardo had returned to the lair, his mind began to try and unravel why his father had chosen him to be leader. He could remember times when he had shown leadership qualities and indeed saved the lives of his brothers, but he thought he had just done what was necessary. He hadn't been heroic or special in any way. He had just done what needed to be done. He began to remember one such occasion that had happened three years ago. Master Splinter was on the surface and while he was away, the turtles were supposed to stay in the lair. They did not. The four brothers decided to explore and although Leo and Mikey were only nine years old and Donnie and Raph were only ten, they felt confident that they would not get into any sort of trouble. But of course, they did. Leonardo who felt responsible for his brothers, was not happy by their insistence on exploring and had at first tried to prevent them from doing so. Raphael had simply pushed past him, mumbling, Daddy's boy. Donatello gave him an apologetic look but still left the lair and Michelangelo was oblivious to Leonardo as he was at the time listening for a dirty and aged pair of headphones to Wake Me Up Before You Go Go by Wham! which was playing on a portable music device with dents in the casing and a screen with dead pixels, whilst blindly following his brothers out of the lair, dancing rather embarrassingly with various jumps and wriggly arm movements as he went, but seemingly unaware of how stupid he looked. <laughs>